So the issue of concealed carry bans is once again back in the hands of the Supreme Court and they're going to have to decide if they're going to strike down all these states and the various laws which were passed in direct defiance to what the court said in Bruin. So let's talk about what is now happening. Now, before we jump into this video, I want to thank one of the new sponsors of the channel, which is Patriot Mobile. For 10 years, Patriot Mobile has been the only company in America, the only wireless provider that has Christian conservative values. Patriot Mobile offers dependable nationwide coverage, giving you the ability to access all three major networks. That means that the same coverage you would get from those companies is the exact same that you would get from Patriot Mobile. And you can also then support a company that has the same values as you, which is pro freedom of speech, pro 2A and pro freedom. I first met Patriot Mobile over at SHOT Show. I met their whole marketing team. I got to have conversations with them and they seemed like a really cool company and they were actually sponsoring you know, SHOT Show, which is a big deal. And also they are 100% based in the US, which means that if you need to call customer service, they're all here in the US and I believe most of their team is actually in Texas. So I recommend that you guys check out Patriot Mobile if you're interested. You can go to patriotmobile.com forward slash scholar, or you can call 972 Patriot. And if you use the code scholar, you can get a free activation fee. So again, really excited about this sponsor, a really cool company. They have the same values as us. And if you guys are interested, again, check out those links. As I mentioned in the intro in this video, we're going to be discussing how this issue of concealed carry and bans and laws that were passed in direct defiance to the Second Amendment and the Bruin decision is once again back in the hands of the Supreme Court. You may recall that recently five cases had expedited hearings in the Second Circuit because of that recent warning that Supreme Court issued to the Second Circuit about adhering to what they said in Bruin. These five cases challenged New York's new Concealed Carry Improvement Act, also known as the CCIA. That New York law created a hyper-restrictive concealed carry law, which was, again, a direct response to what the Supreme Court said in Bruin. The state of New York passed this new law just eight days after the Supreme Court issued that 6-3 to three decision. And now the Supreme Court will get together and consider whether or not they're going to address this issue, if they're going to strike down this defiance, and they're holding conference at the beginning of next month. Now, for those not familiar in Bruin, the Supreme Court struck down New York's original May-issue CCW licensing scheme, finding that it was inconsistent with this nation's history and tradition. One of the primary findings of that Bruin decision was that the government bears the burden to prove that their restrictions are based in the history and tradition of our nation. But another important thing that they also said in that opinion, which was Bruin, was that a state like New York cannot just simply make an entire state or an entire area a sensitive location. There, Justice Thomas mentioned that the state of New York cannot simply make the entire island of Manhattan a sensitive location. However, despite that decision just eight days after that Bruin ruling, the state of New York passed the CCIA, which made things even worse than what existed prior to Bruin. This law was challenged in multiple cases in multiple district courts, and ultimately some of those courts did grant preliminary injunctions, which halted the enforcement of the CCIA. However, the state of New York then appealed up to the Second Circuit, and the Second Circuit is very anti-gun. And what ended up happening in some of these cases is the Second Circuit granted blanket stays on those lower court decisions. Now, in response to that, GOA originally in the Antonio case, this was back last year, sought emergency review to the Supreme Court wanting a block of what the Second Circuit did. The Supreme Court on review of that emergency application denied relief, but in that order, they did state that the Second Circuit could not simply drag their feet on this issue. They would either need to expedite review in these cases or they would need to actually write an opinion and justify why they issued these blanket stays. Now, the Second Circuit didn't want to have to justify issuing those blanket stays, so what they decided to do was expedite hearings in these cases. The big argument really came in the Antonio case because that is much more of a comprehensive challenge to the CCIA. It challenges the you know, permit process to get these new permits, but then also it challenged a bunch of these sense of location restrictions. Now, ultimately what ended up happening is the Second Circuit vacated some of the district court's injunctions, which essentially halted the enforcement of the CCIA. In their decision, the Second Circuit distinguished Bruin as what they claimed was an exceptional case. Therefore, the Second Circuit vacated much of those district court injunctions, 
finding virtually that all the CCIA is facially constitutional under the Second Amendment. So the Second Circuit believed that the CCIA was permissible. Now, in response to that and the Second Circuit's rulings, GOA has now filed a petition for Supreme Court review. Although this case is still technically in an interlocutory posture, it's going to be a review of a preliminary injunction and what the Second Circuit said about those preliminary injunctions. This is still a case that is directly resulting from what the Supreme Court said in Bruin and what New York did in response to that. In this petition, GOA points out that after Bruin and that decision, there are a ton of diverging opinions on what type of historical support is appropriate to justify governmental restrictions like the CCIA. Some courts like the Second Circuit continue to permit later historical support and even have gone so far as to actually challenge what the Supreme Court said in that ruling. GOA states in their petition that repeatedly, the panel advanced the remarkable theory that it was not bound to apply the court's methodology in Bruin. Labeling Bruin a case of exceptional nature, the panel surmised that courts are not required to follow Bruin's lead in cases challenging less exceptional regulations. The panel repeated this claim no fewer than four times, and each time justifying circumvention of a portion of Bruin's framework on the theory that Bruin came out the way that it did only because it was exceptional. So there they're pointing out how the Second Circuit said that they did not have to follow Bruin because Bruin was an exceptional case. It dealt with an exceptional regulation. And they're saying here that the CCIA is not exceptional and it's not the similar type of regulation that was addressed in Bruin. Now, the outcome of Antonyuk in this case is very important for people like me in California who are in fact facing similar concealed carry restrictions that were passed after Bruin, like California here passed SB2. California passed a similar ban in response to Bruin, and right now CRPA filed a lawsuit against SB2. Myself and Reno May are currently named plaintiffs in that lawsuit, and that's being reviewed by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. And ultimately, the Ninth Circuit recently held arguments in this case, the SB2 case. Um, and one of the interesting things is they said, well, why would we not just follow what the Second Circuit said in Antonyuk? Now, in response to this petition, the state of New York argues that the Supreme Court should completely just reject review of this case right now. They argue that this issue is too premature for Supreme Court review because it's a preliminary injunction review and that currently there are no circuit court splits on this issue. And in the response, the state of New York argues that the petition for certiorari should be denied. As an initial matter, this court's ordinary practice of denying interlocutory review is especially advisable here, where the Court of Appeals merely found that the plaintiffs did not establish a likelihood of success on the merits at the preliminary injunction stage, either for a lack of standing or for a lack of meritorious legal claim. The preliminary injunction record in this case was developed in a matter of just weeks, and to date, no fact or expert discovery has taken place. Further litigation may obviate any need for this court's review, and at a minimum, such review would be aided by a complete record and merits determination. So here again, they are trying to kick the can down the road, say Supreme Court, don't review this right now. It's at an early stage. You know, this will be sent back down to the lower court. There will be an actual merits decision, more evidence, all of that. And then at that time, if you don't like what happened, well, then you can step in. New York goes on to state in the response that, moreover, no petitioner has applied for a license under the challenge licensing scheme much less been denied a license based on the good moral character requirement. And there's no record supporting petitioner's speculative assertion about the license review and adjudication process. Now here, what the state of New York is pointing out that is in their eyes, there is an issue of standing that maybe standing has not been met, that the individuals here would have to actually go through the process, be denied or approved, or maybe be denied based on good moral character. Now, this is an issue of standing that had been brought up earlier in this case and some of these other cases. Originally, Judge Sotheby believed that there was no standing for some of the claims that was resolved in the lower court, but here it seems like New York is bringing that up once again, that maybe there is no standing to challenge the process because none of these individuals have actually gone through the process. Well, now the Supreme Court will decide whether or not they're going to grant review to this case, even though it's currently in an interlocutory posture. The Supreme Court has now distributed the Antonio case for Supreme Court conference on June 6th. At Supreme Court conference, the justices get together and they ultimately rule and decide on whether or not they want to grant review to a case or not. Yes, the Supreme Court does not traditionally like preliminary injunction reviews, but this case is so tied directly to Bruin in that decision 
that it could warrant review now. There only needs to be four justices of the Supreme Court who actually want to grant review to a case. So maybe you can get Thomas Alito and maybe they can talk two other judges into actually granting review to this case. So this is something we're going to be watching very closely to see what happens after that June 6 conference. Again, big shout out to GOA. They're always doing amazing things. Go support them. I will leave a link down below where you can donate to them and support them. And if we get any more information, I will let you guys know. So if you guys like this video and you would like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in the type of two-way news. But as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget this nation was built by arm scholars and this nation will be maintained by arm scholars.